the innate nature of the animal, the thing that we took it from in nature was the wolf. In the pack, it's a family. When one of those wolves gets hungry, he gets up and he starts moving and touching the other wolves and they all start waking up and their stomachs start getting hungry. That's all physical. That is all kinetic from the stomach to the brain. Now it instincts the brain to go and hunt. These wolves will bark at each other and they'll bite each other and they'll get crazy to establish dominance and roles and orders. It's an animal. It doesn't talk. They only show you behaviors. They only show you instincts. My grandfather had police dogs growing up. He was a metropolitan police officer in the Boston area. That was when I saw kind of what the German Shepherd was. It could be a working dog, utility dog, but it also could be in the house and be disciplined. I can take my dog to Starbucks and have no qualms or, or worries that he is going to be an inappropriate dog because he's bred correctly, he has the correct heart, and he has the correct training. Seeing German Shepherds, watching German Shepherds, I was never afraid of the German Shepherd. I always knew that this was a dog that was to be respected and could do multiple venues of things. It drove me to have a relationship with my dog. She was a difficult dog. I had to figure out what was going on with this dog. Why was this dog not listening to me? Why could I not get this dog to do things for me? So I got into theory versus practice. When I started using the everyday things that my dog does and has as motivation, and then started holding my dog accountable for the things that I knew it knew, then I saw a dog that said, you're fair, you understand me as the dog, you don't understand me as a human, you understand me as a being that does instincts and behaviors, not rational, logical thinking. This is what these dogs were bred for. They were bred to have character and they were bred to fight in opposition. When you have somebody who's trained in martial arts or in boxing, they have a skill, they have use of their hands, they have use of their athletic ability. They tap into a, a will to fight. When you're at two and a half minutes and you have 30 seconds left in a round and you're beat and you're tired, and whether it's you're punching a bag, whether you're sparring a coach, whether you have someone fresh coming in 45 seconds left in a round who's rested, the boxer and, and the fighter has to find something inside of themselves to keep going, to keep doing the job. It's their heart that gets in the last 30 seconds of that round. For me, I try to find a German Shepherd that has that inherent ability. At that point, I'm the coach who has the mitts and the, the side paddles, and I'm going one, two, one, two, one, two, left hook, one, two, up high. The fighter's getting themselves trained so that they can have fast twitch reactions to things that are going on and create a pathway from their brain through all of their axons down to their muscles and get those muscles to fire as quickly and as responsibly as possible under a deliberate and exhausting period so that when they get into the fight, they don't have to think about throwing a punch. They don't have to think about throwing a kick. They're just reacting in, in a flow state. When you put them across from somebody who wants to take their head off, cause them to bleed, take the money from the purse of the fight, name all of these things that motivate these MMA fighters, which is a plethora of things that, that motivate them. It's the same with the animal. When the animal gets into competition against an adversary who's not the old guru, one, two, one, two, he goes, I don't like you. You're not Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi taught me when I see you, I fight with heart and whole force.
I don't have to think about throwing the punches. The only thing I have to think about is what are you showing me? Where's your weaknesses? And how can I go full force into that? All the pathways there are created in the training. It has to be my current dog, Cirque. In training, I know what he's gonna do. I know his behavior. When I go out onto the field with Cirque, I know how he feels. I can lay him down and I can feel him in my heart, in my soul. The bond between me and Circus. I've raised him since he was a puppy. He's been my responsibility to feed him, keep him healthy, clip his nails, brush him, and make sure he's all around healthy and in good condition to, to live as a dog. We've been back and forth six or seven times. We've been to seven national championships. Oh God, he's like, he's been through everything with me. Um, he's a dog that I've tried to sell four or five times and been told don't sell him. A lot of emotion goes into the dog and, and you try to detach that from training. I haven't thought about having a life without dogs. Not for the last 15 years. To say dogs is, has given me anything is an understatement. They've given me everything. They've shown me the world. I met my fiance through dogs. She has a police dog that I put on the street. In the pack, it's a family. It's brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts, leader and some followers and some old wolves. I teach both of my sons how to respect life and how to respect the animals. I'm giving them the fringe experience. Hopefully one day he'll bridge the gap.